Hey guys, so welcome back to the show. I'm Megan Hardy, founder of Fitness Uncharted, and this is where we talk about mindset and tactics that are going to help you build muscle, lose body fat, improve your health, and leave you feeling really freaking confident and empowered. I am your host, Megan Hardy, and welcome back to episode number six. And this one's a really important topic to me. It's something that comes up quite frequently in my conversations with women. I have a lot of conversations every week, uh, men and women, but in particular, I work with mostly women and it's the conversation around motivation, right? Like you've probably heard it before, said it yourself or heard someone else say it. Like, I think I just don't have enough motivation. You know, oftentimes when I ask women what they're struggling with most, they're like, I don't know. I think that maybe it's a lack of motivation and everyone thinks they're lacking motivation, but what they're really lacking is discipline myself included. I am not, um, you know, absent from this list of people that lack discipline. Okay. Anytime I miss the mark on my goals, it's not because I lacked motivation, but because I didn't have the self-discipline or the systems in place to make it happen. If I had a quarter for every time someone asked me, Megan, how do you stay so motivated? Or like, are you, are you always motivated? Like I'd have like $5, <laughs> like maybe more than that. I might have more, you know, if it was a quarter for every time I heard that, but you know, I have a good bit of money because I get that quite often because especially in the health and fitness space, for the majority of the time, people see me being very disciplined um, for the most part. But my response is always the same to that question. If someone asks like, how do you stay so motivated? I'm like, I don't. Or like, are you always motivated? I'm like, nope, sure am not. And even with the title of this episode being like building unbreakable discipline, I just want to be real with y'all and let you know that's just a catchy title because even my discipline is definitely breakable sometimes. So you're not always going to be perfect and that's okay. We don't need perfection. We're just working towards having discipline the majority of the time. Like what are you, who are you the majority of the time? What are your actions say about you the majority of the time? That's what we're looking at. And I want to let you know too, that no one is just born with discipline. It is learned, it is built, and it is a practiced skill. If you see someone that you think has a lot of discipline in a certain area, you might just be like, man, they're just like so disciplined or they're so motivated to do X, Y, or Z, like to work really hard at their job or business or to, you know, work really hard in the gym or what whatnot. But just know that that person trained themselves to to be disciplined in that area, like either consciously or subconsciously, they train themselves like knowingly or not to have discipline in that area. And yeah, some things might come more naturally to some of us than others in some areas of our lives, but it is a, still a trained skill to have discipline. So today I want to share with you guys, you know, three tips on how to build discipline, to reach your goals. So you can stop relying on motivation because motivation is like <laughs> just about as reliable as like the McDonald's ice cream machines, right? Like if anyone goes to, you know, raise a hands, does anyone go to McDonald's for ice cream or for the McFlurries? Like if you know anything about me, you know, I love an Oreo McFlurry. Hence why I named my dog Oreo McFurry. Yes. That's like fur, not flurry, but McFurry. Um, and because I love them so much, but the freaking McDonald's around our neighborhoods or where I live, you cannot rely on them to be working. Like it's almost a joke. We'll go up to one. They're like, oh, our McDonald's ice cream machine is broken. Oh, it's broken. It's like laughable, right? Very, very unreliable. That is like motivation. Think about motivation as like the McDonald's ice cream machine. It is unpredictable and it's unreliable. So let's not rely on that to reach our goals. Okay. Like stop relying on motivation because we can't predict when we're going to just all of a sudden feel motivated. Right. So let's talk about some tactics and some tips for how you can build discipline. Because don't worry if you're like, I'm not a disciplined person or I'm not disciplined in a certain area, or you would like to be more disciplined in a certain area, this is for you. So tip number one is schedule anything that's important to you. Scheduling. You have to schedule it. If it is not on your calendar, it's likely not going to happen. Like show me someone's calendar and I will show you what their priorities 
in life are like, if you're, if it's not penciled in on, on your schedule and in your calendar and time blocked, then it's probably not a priority and it may or may not happen literally down to like meal prep or workouts. Like you have to pencil in like, when are you going to get your meal prep done? What day, what time, when, and where we have to know the, when, and the, where pencil in your meal prep pencil in your workouts, like treat it guys, like a date with yourself, like your workout or anything you're trying to do, especially let's kind of talk about health goal wise, pencil it in like a date with yourself. Like just like you would get childcare or like get your husband to watch the kids while you get your workout or anything like that. Like you need to pencil that in so you can make it happen just like you would, let's say like for a doctor's appointment, you're going to put that on your calendar, right? Cause you wouldn't miss it. You're going to make it happen. Or like one of the kids sports practices, like you're not going to miss that. You're not just going to get, Oh, too busy. And the time got away from me. Like, Oh, sorry, honey. Couldn't bring you to practice or to soccer. You know, it's like you pencil those things in and you make them a priority. And oftentimes as women, we put ourselves on the back burner and especially as moms, you put yourself on the back burner. It's like, you'll make your kids a priority, your husband cooking for them, all the things, but it's like, where do you come into play and all that? You literally have to pencil yourself in and those things that are priorities to you and for your health and your goals, you've got to pencil them in and write them down just like any other priorities for the day. So a good example, or I guess a bad example of this would be what I do and where my pitfall lies is I have a to-do list. I am a running to-do list person. And so I write it down. Like I love being able to check things off. Like, oh, it feels so good. Anyone else out there who's like, I will literally have already done something, write it down on a piece of paper just to be able to go check it back off because I love checking things off. Um, I love a to-do list that I could check, but you know, I will have this running to-do list or like I have a physical calendar where I also have my to-do list things. And I'll literally write it down a list of things I need to do that day, but guess how many of them get done oftentimes if I don't literally pencil in the time frame that I'm going to do it, not as many as I want get done. Let's just say that like, I will get some of them done, but I'm like, Oh shoot. I still didn't get to that thing. Or like, shoot, I still, Oh, two days later, dang it. I still didn't do it. It's like still I'm like, yeah, it is a priority. But if I really look at my calendar in my life, like how much of a priority was it? If I just kind of kept pushing it off and pushing it off. And the reason that it kept, kept getting pushed off is because I didn't have a set day and time that I was going to make it happen. I didn't have that appointment with myself to make it happen. So if you're a to-do list person, that's great. I love one too, but you actually have to know, take it one step further and know where and when it's going to happen. Otherwise it may not happen. It may, it may not, but let's not rely on like maybes, right? So literally let's take even something as simple as like, if you're trying to make a goal of calling your kid more frequently, right? Like maybe you have a college age kid or like, you know, someone who's out of the house or whatever, calling a friend instead of being like, Oh, let me call, you know, Emily. That's one of my best friends. Let me call her this week. I need to actually put it on my calendar and go like, okay, on my walk break at 12 o'clock from 12 to 12 15, I'm going to call Emily and I'm going to pencil that in to call her on my walk break from 12 to 12 15. Because otherwise, if I just kind of have it on the day floating around and I'll get to it when I can, it's probably not going to happen. Same thing for anything health or fitness related, your meal prep, your workouts, all of that. If you just go, okay, I know I'm going to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but you don't know what, what time of day, let's say you work from home and you're like, I'll just get to it when like my workload is a little bit lighter in the day. I'll just kind of get to it when I can girl that workout probably not happening because we know when you get in the middle of your work day ish is going to hit the fan probably, or extra things come up, extra meetings get scheduled, whatnot. Like you actually have to block it off even of your work calendar, like take that as your break, block it off for your workout. Like you have to block off that time to make it happen. So that is tip number one. I won't go even more down the rabbit hole of scheduling because hopefully that makes sense. You've got to be specific about where and when it's happening and you've got to treat it like a priority. Show me your schedule. And if none of your health fitness goal related things are on there, probably not a priority to make it happen. So, and of course, again, there's so much grace with like, you know, things cropping up and plans get moved around and we have to reschedule or have a plan B. There's so much grace for that. It doesn't mean this is set in stone. It just means it's actually giving you something to 
go off of. Like for instance, this past week, like I always work out in the mornings at the same time every morning. But one of my girlfriends texted me in the middle of my workout and was like, Hey, I need, can you call me? I need, I need your help. I had to end my workout early and that's okay. You know, that's that those are the kind of things we can't plan for, but the majority of the time my schedule really helped me stay, helps me stay consistent with my workouts. So that's tip number one, scheduling. Tip number two is to figure out what things in your life are hindering you from having self-discipline. So for me, I'll start with just some examples. So for me, I have like three big ones that I thought of just kind of right off the bat. First and foremost, screen time. That's a biggie that gets in the way of my self-discipline. Like, yes, I use my phone a lot, like a lot, a lot for business um, purposes, but then I'll find myself scrolling, you know, content or social media for, you know, research purposes, you know, and then I get stuck down the rabbit hole of scrolling TikTok or Instagram reels for like 30 minutes. And I'm like, holy crap, holy time warp. Where did the time go? And then I didn't get to one of those things on my to-do list that wasn't penciled in and scheduled in. Guess what didn't get done in that 30 minute time frame that I went down the, the rabbit hole of screen time. Yeah, that. So Screen time is a big one for me. I know that that is something that hinders my self-discipline and just being aware of it is helpful. So like, that's where I know, okay, if I'm trying to really get something done, um, then I might need to even put my phone in the other room. I literally just did this yesterday. I put my phone in the other room, um, just so that notifications coming on up on my phone, like just the urge, like if you think about how many times we just flip our phone over to check it so many times a day, just to see like what notification popped up, all of that. It's all taking away from our focus and that self-discipline. So removing the temptation, it can be helpful. So that's one thing that's really helpful for me. Netflix at night, like my husband and I, it's like, that's kind of one of those things, just watching one or two shows, but I'm like, you know what? If there's things I really need to get done, maybe instead of watching two shows, we just watch one, you know, it's like, so it doesn't mean I have to completely remove these things, but I do need to figure out what is hindering me from having more self-discipline in areas of my life. And at times that I need to be more self-disciplined. So that's a big one for me. Um, Two would be more so a personality trait that I know hinders my self-discipline. And that is my perfectionism. I am someone who I'm a procrastinator because I am a perfectionist and any perfectionist out there can probably relate to this. Like I can be a down to the wire person just because it's not because I'm lazy, but I put it off because I'm like, I don't really know. Like I kind of get overwhelmed if I don't really know how to do something or I'm like, Ooh, like uh, procrastination. Like I'll just kind of wait till the last minute. And then like, boom, I work really well under pressure. So that's nice. <laughs> but you know, it's like that perfectionism I know gets in the way of my self-discipline and gets in the way of me taking action. Case in point is again, y'all, I'm going to be real just real with y'all and vulnerable, like even starting this podcast, I was like, I don't know how to start a podcast. I don't know what recording stuff I need. I don't know this or that. I'm not a tech person. I'm a health and fitness coach. Like I'm not a tech podcast person. Like, I don't know. And my perfectionism came out and I procrastinated the crap out of starting this podcast. That's why in the first episode, I'm like, I'm really giddy about getting this up and going because it's been a long time in coming all because of me not taking action. So I know that my procrast or my perfectionism can cause procrastination and can hinder my self-discipline. So knowing that about myself, I need to kind of incorporate things that like, you know, even like the mindset of reducing overwhelm for myself or just taking it one step at a time. Like even with this podcast, that's what really helped. I was like, okay, okay. I'm going to create my cover photo today. Okay. Like I'm going to do this one little step. Okay. I'm going to research how to do this today instead of going like, oh my gosh, it's just this huge elephant that I don't know how to eat. Like just do it one step at a time, one by a time. So that is one thing, or that's the second thing I know can hinder my progress and my self-discipline. Number three, uh, for me that can hinder my self-discipline is not eating well or getting enough sleep. Y'all not taking care of my health. Talk about being a health and fitness coach. Like this last month, I feel like my nutrition was pretty shaky and it definitely hinders my self-discipline. Like when I feel like crap, 
I am not as quote unquote motivated, but really like, I don't feel like doing the things I know I'm supposed to do. And when I'm not getting enough sleep, cause I'm staying up too late by usually working, to be honest, I, I tend to get like a second wind at night and then I'll stay up too late, but then I don't get enough sleep. And then guess what? Like I kind of have to take that time during the next day to recover from that. And my self-discipline can kind of take a hit. So like for me, not taking care of myself can definitely get in the way of my self-discipline. So maybe for you, it's something different. Maybe it's a person. It could be a person, a place, a thing, like identify those things in your life that are hindering you from having the self-discipline that you need to take action on your goals. So like other examples could be, maybe it is a person, maybe it's your husband or a friend or, or your kids or whoever, maybe your husband is not super supportive, or maybe you never have anyone to help watch the kids. Like maybe that's hindering you from being able to have your self-discipline because you kind of have to rely on them some, right? So maybe you can have that conversation, like, Hey, like have that heart to heart with your husband. Like, Hey, can you watch the kids for this 45 minutes? you know, so I can get a workout and, you know, and this is what I'm needing right now. Maybe you need to have some of those hard conversations. Maybe it's a place. So maybe you are, uh, maybe it's somewhere that you usually go for drinks and you overindulge and, you know, it's where you always, always go with your friends, but then like, you always know you're going to overindulge on food and drinks. And then the next day, you know, your discipline's going to be in the toilet and you know, you're going to be recovering for the next two days and miss your workouts. Like maybe you need to avoid that place. You could still hang out with the people, but maybe you need to go find something else to do with them somewhere else. So it's like, maybe avoid that. Or maybe it's a thing. I don't know what that thing might be for you, Netflix or something, but it's like, figure out what is hindering your progress and then figure out how you can avoid these pitfalls in the future. And successful people, like they really aren't any more disciplined, like talking about discipline. They're really not any more disciplined than the next person. They just have better systems and have better control over their environments. So this is where if you can figure out those things that are hindering your progress, and if you can make the changes to your environment so that those won't get in your way, you're going to automatically help your self-discipline because you don't have to be tempted or get pulled away. Like you're going to be like more eye on the prize if you can control your environment around you. So that is tip Number two, figure out what is hindering your progress and then figure out a a solution. Tip number three is identify as the person that you want to become. This is, this might be the most important one. You guys, uh, human nature is to want to stay in alignment with who we believe ourselves to be. Like if you don't believe that you can be the healthy fit person, like you're probably not going to do healthy fit person things, right? If you, if you don't believe that you can be the financially stable, financially healthy, wealthy millionaire person, you're probably not going to do the wealthy rich person things, right? Like doing, you know, having the budget or doing the work or, you know, taking the education courses, all of those things, or like for the healthy fit person things. If you don't feel like you're that person, you may not do the workouts. You may not meal prep the food. Like if you don't believe yourself that you can be that, then you're probably not going to do those things that are going to bring you towards becoming that person. And like, if we're, if we are doing things that we feel are out of alignment with who we believe we are, we get imposter syndrome. And if you are not familiar with imposter syndrome, let me tell you about it. It's not fun. And it's kind of a a catch 22, actually, even with being in the health and fitness and nutrition coaching space, talk about imposter syndrome. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. And then you get imposter syndrome because you're like, well, who am I to be like talking about any of this stuff? But you know, it's a great thing because there's so much to learn and so much room for growth, but you can get imposter syndrome and it can really make you paralyze you from wanting to take action on your goals, because at the root of who we are, we want to stay in alignment with who we believe we are. And there's a quote that says, we question all our beliefs, except for the ones that we really believe in and those we never think to question. So my question to you is who do you believe yourself to be? Like what beliefs do you have 
that you believe in so strongly, like you actually have never even questioned them. Like you might even be, you might go like, yeah, I'm just the fat friend. And you don't even question that. Like, that's just, that's just who you've believed you are. Right. Like you don't even think to question that belief because you believe it so much or like, I'm just the F up. That's never going to go anywhere in life because that's how my dad's was. And that's how my dad's dad was. And, you know, I come from a terrible family line and we've never had money, blah, blah, blah. Like you don't even think to question that, like that that's your lot in life because that's genuinely just who you believe you are. So first you have to recognize like, what are the beliefs in within myself that are just, I've been kind of holding on to because I want to stay in alignment with who I think I am. I'm not stepping into the person that I want to become. And I have to do this too, you guys, like, especially, especially in business and finance and things like that. I'm like, okay, stepping into that person that I want to become. Cause a lot of it can feel really daunting or feel like I'm not that person. Like that imposter syndrome comes out. I'm like, Ooh, like avoid, avoid, abort, abort. But it's like, okay, we got to recognize like, who do we want to become? And then the question that comes along with that for a lot of people and for myself too, cause I don't like doing things that feel incongruent with who I believe I am right? Like it feels fake or false. So what if you're going like, okay, Megan, but like, how do I be the healthy fit person when like, if I'm not that person yet, like I'm not there yet. So like, how can I have the feelings of being that person? And if you listen to anything like, um, Dr. Joe Dispenza or any of his work, like some of the mindset stuff, they really are big about feeling the emotions of who you want to become and where you want to be and feeling it before you experience it, which is possible, but I can relate if you're going like, yeah, that's a nice thought, like hard to do. I, t- I totally get that. I relate with that, even though I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can feel the emotions before I've experienced it, but it's hard. And if you're going, okay, what if I'm not that person yet? So how do I do this? How you're going to do it, how you're going to start to shift your identity is you want to build self-respect. So build self-respect. How you can do that is by keeping the promises that you make to yourself. Like if you say you're going to meal prep on Sunday at three o'clock, freaking meal prep on Sunday at three o'clock. But if you say you're going to work out three times this week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, work out this week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Like if you say you're going to stop eating out during the week so that you can save money and pay off all your debt and have financial freedom for your family in the next year, then do that. Like stop eating out throughout the weekdays and build that self-respect because you did the thing that you promised yourself you were going to do. And with any of those things, again, it doesn't mean that you are perfect, the major perfect all of the time. It means that you are building that self-respect and keeping the promises to yourself the majority of the time. Like take the eating out example, for instance, like if you're like, okay, my goal is to save money, you know, so I can either invest in myself or I can pay off debt or whatever it is. I'm not going to eat out during the weekdays, but then guess what? You ate out on Friday afternoon, like, oops, but that, but you haven't eaten out for the last three or four weeks, girl, that's a win. That's a win. You know, you don't have to be perfect. It's just about being disciplined the majority of the time and building that self-respect in. And this is actually, um, this is a lot from atomic habits by James clear. Um, this is a book called atomic habits one of my favorites ever. Like if you don't have this book, go Amazon it right now, ship it to your house, read it. Um, because it's so simple and yet like, so life-changing. He just talks about atomic habits. So like the baby, baby, little habits that will add up over time. So how you can change your life by just being like 1% better every day. And he talks about how every action that we take is either a vote for or against who we want to become. So every action, everything that we're doing day to day is voting for either towards who we want to become, or it's a vote against who we want to become. And our goal needs to be to have the majority vote towards the person that we want to become. So this is, this is what's going to build your self-respect, like building your confidence and shaping your identity into the person that you want to be. So for instance, let's take kind of like a typical day, right? Let's, I don't know whose typical day this is, but let's just say you get up in the morning, you, uh, wake up, your alarm goes off. You start scrolling social media. Like you normally do for 20 or 30 minutes. 
Um, you planned on getting a workout sometime today, but you know, haven't gotten it in yet, but you scrolled for 30 minutes. Then you got up and brush your teeth. You took the dog out, you had your coffee, and then you did prep your, uh, breakfast. You had a nice healthy breakfast and you prep your lunch, um, so that you don't have to buy lunch out. Like just take that example. Well, you could probably put one vote in the morning. Like if you scrolled social media for 30 minutes and you didn't get a workout in or didn't use that time to get the workout in. And let's say you didn't get in later in the day. Okay. That's one vote against who you probably want to become, right? Like scrolling social media, missing the workout. Okay. Then, you know, but you did prep your food for the day. So like, I would say the other things are kind of neutral, like taking the dog out or brushing your teeth, but you could vote, you know, use those as a vote against for or against who you want to become, or you could treat those as neutral, but then let's take, you know, meal prepping your breakfast and lunch. That was a vote towards who you probably want to become. Right. So you just do that for your day. And then the goal is to do that, you know, start doing those things And that is how you will build unbreakable discipline. Like start doing those things that you want to do the majority of the time. So like you only need, like our goal needs to be to have majority vote towards the person we want to become. This is how we're going to build our self-respect. So you do not have to, you do not have to be perfect all the time. It doesn't mean that you have to have all votes in that one bucket. It just means majority vote. And that is how you're going to build that, that unshakable discipline, self-respect, build your confidence and start shifting your identity towards the person that you want to become, because now you're doing things that are in alignment with that future person that you want to become. If you're not doing the things and taking the action of that person you want to be, it's only natural that you're going to feel like an imposter. So you've got to have the majority vote towards you want to become, and then it will start feeling more natural. So Just to recap for you guys, so the tips from this episode. So first and foremost, start scheduling anything that is a priority for you. Schedule it in, be specific, put it on your calendar. Number two, take an inventory of all the things that are getting in the way of your self-discipline and figure out solutions to avoid those same pitfalls in the future. So you can control your environment and avoid those things that are hindering your self-discipline. Number three is to shift your identity into the person that you want to become by keeping the promises that you make to yourself and building your self-respect. That's how you'll shift your identity. So start doing those things. And that is how you will build unbreakable discipline. I mean, let's say 90% unbreakable discipline. Okay. Like the majority of the time, because again, we're not trying to be perfect here, but you will be disciplined more often than you're not. And that's all it takes to make progress on your goals. Like you do those things and stay disciplined the majority of the time. And girl, you're not going to hardly recognize yourself. Like or your life this time next year. Like I can speak from experience on this, the more and more discipline I've stayed in certain areas of my life. I'm like, wow, looking a year, a year later, looking back, I'm like, I didn't think I'd be this far or where I am today. And it's amazing when you're not relying on motivation because discipline is greater than motivation. If you're not relying on motivation, but you're building that, that self-respect and discipline, how far you can go. So that is today's episode. If you got any golden nuggets out of it, go ahead and take a screenshot of this episode, share it on your socials, tag me so I can repost it. And thank you guys so much for listening and I'll catch you on the next episode.